Welcome back to Pennsylvania Outdoor Life. Taking the chill out of the building here, hopefully one of the last times we need a fire. But right now, we're gonna go down to Jim Thorpe where Tom, Tom Leinhardt has built himself a beautiful little place to tie up some flies. So Tom, I remember tying flies in a basement where Brian is six foot whatever and he had it, he actually ducked. This is a far cry from that setup. We're yes. New, new shop, right? Absolutely. During the COVID, we decided, well, let's do something a little different. And we came up here, this is kind of like our shed where we kept our lawnmower and storage. And right. <laughs> my kids cleaned it out. We started working on it and this is what we got now. What a great place to work. Things hanging on the wall, bright and airy. It's gotta be just nice to, when you get done doing your masonry work to come up here and just relax. 100%, it just, it's nice. Come back from fishing, I can put my waders, I can hang everything. It, it is, it's, it's, and it's nice to just come up here and friends come over, sit and tie flies. Right. And, you know, it's just nice. And that's what you're gonna do right now, you're gonna tie a fly. What tie, what, what fly are you going to tie? So we're gonna fish in the Lehigh River today. So one thing with the Lehigh River, it's loaded with stone flies. We're gonna do something simple. Um, it's called the Pat's Rubber Leg. Um, when it gets wet, I, I mean, it, it really looks realistic. Um, my theory is sometimes nymph fishing, I'll sit and tie some patterns that take 30 minutes that look great, but one cast, one hang up, and you're done. Um, I keep a journal of every day when I fish and this pattern right here is probably the one that I, I go to all the time. Pound for pound. Yes. All right, well, yes. let's get tying. Okay. What kind of hook, what kind of stuff, how do you get started? So I'm gonna use a 718 fire hole stick okay. with a 3 16th black bead. Okay, we're gonna put six aught Danville thread. And that's the on. base you always start with, right? That is always the base, yes. Yeah. We're gonna do something a little different here gonna actually wait till we put these rubber legs up front here and we're gonna push the bead over them um, pull this down to the side of it push this over on the other side now you can see you got some rubber legs coming out over the front I'm gonna make a little crisscross wraps here on the rubber legs um, you'll see, so when I push this up, it doesn't squish them together. Sure. Um, we're gonna do a whip finish here, and we're gonna do a little whip finish. Get our legs out of that whip finish here. I have a little cutter on the back of my whip finish. I'm gonna cut that off. So you got two legs in already. Two legs in already. I'm gonna take a little bit of glue, and I'm just gonna put it over my knot, um, just because when I push the bead over, um, we're gonna put that bead on there. We're gonna take 0.2 uh, lead wire. Um, we wanna add weight to this because of course we wanna be on the bottom. We're gonna make about 16 wraps here of lead wire. And we're gonna put a little glue there. We're gonna push this up. And I'm actually gonna, because the water's up today, I'm actually gonna put a little more weight on this, but this is gonna be 0.10. And the reason being is I just wanna have a little more weight, but also for the taper. You know, we wanna have a little the taper, body, yes. Like, like a so, stone fly looks like. Normally I would build it up with thread, but we, we wanna try to get as much weight on here as we can. Um, break that off. Tom then wraps some thread and attaches the tail. Next, he uses coffee and black stone fly chenille to start creating and shaping the body. We're gonna wrap this up to about where that 0.20 lead wire stops. Stop it right here. I'm gonna tie it off, keep it in the back there. I'm gonna cover this with some thread. Tom then attaches the legs and keeps them about a quarter inch apart, and it's finally time to finish our bug. 
Man, that's just coming to life right there. Yeah, and I, I really think like, uh, you know, this is just my opinion. I think with uh, rubber legs, I, I think movement with, with you know, like if you ever take traditional nymphs and stuff with the hair they use, you know, it collects air bubbles and stuff. And, and it just, that, that like a rabbit fur was real big years ago and it just moves. Um, and same thing with the rubber legs. I, I just think when that's coming through the water and those legs, it just makes it look lifelike. So I'm gonna make like, I make two behind these rubber legs. I actually kind of wrap over top of them here a little bit. And then I'm gonna make, just wrap this chenille up. Um, and I'll kind of actually wrap back over that a little bit just to build up a little bit of a, just so my taper like we talked about. And then I just wrap in front of these legs. And I'm gonna make two wraps up behind the bead. Awesome. And we're gonna just tie that off. I make three or four wraps over the chenille at the bottom. I'm gonna cut underneath. And I'm gonna come in and whip finish. Now I'm just gonna just, I'm gonna trim the rough trim these just so I can um, get my whip finish and I don't get all tangled up here. And um, I'm gonna make a three turn whip finish. Seat my knot there. Make another three turn whip finish and uh, come in, cut this off. And then what we're gonna do is I pull these little, come out, I'm gonna cut my legs about, I mean, I just. Oh my goodness. If I am tying for someone, I'll, I'll measure them out. But these are, to me, this is a fish and fly. Yep. And, um, that's pretty much your 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 stone. And when that gets wet, it really looks pretty cool. That's awesome. You made yeah. that come right to life. You know, and he's really just a quiet kind of guy that loves tying flies for people. But if you want to get a hold of him, of course, you could always do it on Facebook. Simply like Tom Leinhardt. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back.